of that, just eight days remain to reach an agreement with congressional Republicans before the government shuts down. Joining me now, California Congresswoman Karen Bast. You were at the CBC dinner last night uh, yes. with the president, and she joins us now. I would love to start uh, with the president's remarks last night, and because he covered a lot of ground, and just get your thoughts. Well, I thought his um, speech was very pertinent, especially to that audience where he referenced what happened in Washington, D.C., but he also referenced what happened in Chicago and just pointed out the absurdity at the fact that we can't even pass legislation to extend background checks. And he, he also spoke, you know, a great deal about the Affordable Care Act. And, and I wanted to ask you about that because that was right. the Affordable Care Act was sort of like the biggest... Um, I'd say applause line, it seemed, uh, that he got. But obviously in the African-American community, so many parts of the Affordable Care Act are going to make a tremendous difference. Right, exactly. And I mean, let me just point out, too, pre-existing conditions and the cap on insurance. Both of those things literally save lives. I spent many years working in the emergency room at Los Angeles County Hospital, and I know that people's lives will be saved from those two provisions alone. Yeah. You know, uh, Congresswoman, I want to play for you a little something that our old friend Wayne LaPierre had to say <laughs> this morning in response to the violence this week. Sure. They're trafficking in 13-year-old girls out the, down the street. It, uh, there's all kinds of drugs, all kinds of guns, and the priority of this town is, hey, do you think a hunter that sells a gun to a hunter in Kansas ought to have to be under the thumb of the federal government? So, what's, I mean, what struck me about that, there were so many things that struck me about that, but, exactly. you know, it, there continues to be, from the perspective of uh, the NRA leadership and, and Wayne LaPierre, such a disconnect in what we're talking about. And certainly the president really, I thought, eloquently laid it out last night in terms of the cycle of violence and what happens in places like Chicago. And that, you know, within those communities, how we talk about and think about gun safety measures and gun control is very different than hunters and sportsmen, most of whom actually agree with the idea of responsible gun ownership. Well, absolutely, and I'm beginning to worry about that guy because he's sounding crazier and crazier <laughs> after each one of these incidences. Yes, he is. But, but, but you're exactly right. I mean, background checks have nothing to do with hunters. We know that the guy that took those lives at the Navy barracks, we know that he had a mental health history, and we also know that he bought a gun. And so if background checks had been in place, he had several brushes with the law, and he could have been stopped from buying the weapons that killed so many people just a few days ago. And obviously, I know there'll be some conversations uh, coming uh, in the week ahead about whether or not there'll be efforts to renew gun safety, although before we get to that, we have to deal with this shutdown showdown that right. is forthcoming. Uh, your Congressman Moran uh, had a comment earlier today. He said, I'm willing to shut down the government to get rid of the sequester, and that certainly isn't the immediate interest of federal employees. This is about the long-term interests of the government and the country. This is not going to be a world-class economy and progressive society if the government isn't able to play its role. So one of the dynamics, Congresswoman, that we're seeing, I mean, obviously there's this sort of ping-pong with the Republicans, but then also we have, we've seen reports of some Democrats raising concerns about voting for this without having to, without the opportunity to undo parts of the sequester. Well, right. It, that's exactly right. And if you just think about it, you know, the mantra of the Republicans had been the deficit, government spending, government spending. Well, the deficit has been reduced over $800 billion. And the fact of the matter is, is that the deficit would be reduced even further, employment would be better, and the economy would be doing even better if we didn't have the sequester. And so I think it's right to say that we now have to look at that. We shouldn't just lock in the sequester into place. But I really think that the playbook is on the Republican side. They are fixated now on the health care reform. They, for whatever reason, don't want to see all of the country be covered it with health care. And so I think they've painted themselves into a corner. All right. Thank you, Congresswoman Bass, for joining us this morning, this afternoon. Thanks for having me. <laughs>